Good morning. My name is Mike Williams, the director of Rowan County Criminal Justice Academy. I'd like to thank you all for coming to the dedication ceremony of the Rowan County Criminal Justice Academy building edition, which is attached behind us here. Um, this morning, we have a presentation of our colors, and what I do ask that we rise for the presentation and that we remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody can please rise for me. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, <clears throat> for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <clears throat> this time, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce Board Supervisor Representative Joe McNamara to come up and say a few words. Good morning and welcome. This is a great, great opportunity, a great occasion. Anytime that you work together, we're much stronger together than we are apart. That before I begin and say a few words, I would like to recognize many, recognize everybody in attendance. Thank you for being here. But uh, some elected officials, I'd like to recognize Charlotte Moore with the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, uh, Mr. Don Caldwell, the Roanoke City Commonwealth Attorney, who I saw earlier. Uh, there he is. Uh, Brian Townsend, Assistant City Manager, Roanoke City. Chris Morrill, City Manager, welcome. Tony Giorno, U.S. Attorney for the Western District. Uh, Bill Overton, Franklin County Sheriff. Thank you for being here. Um, some time ago, we had, when we started the, the, fire, the regional fire training center, the, the whole concept and the idea was, if we train together, we learn each other's policies and we can work together more effectively. The exact same is true from the police perspective as well. And I think it's been a long process, but when I was here a week or two ago and talked to the actual folks that just came through the first class, it was a really wonderful experience. And you looked at where they were sitting and how they were sitting, and they've all learned together from the same instructors, their friends, and I think it makes for a much stronger environment for everybody. We all live in one valley, and it's delightful. It's just delightful to see the level of cooperation and how well people work together. So I, I'm thrilled to be here and, and be just a small part of, uh, of the culmination of, the, of that process. At this point, I would like to recognize and introduce Vice Mayor Dave Trinkle, who has been my pleasure to work with over the years, and thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman McNamara. Good morning. They decided today would be more appropriate for the Vice Mayor to be here, so I'm glad to be here. Uh, Chief Hall, Chief Perkins, 
uh, all the Roanoke County and city officers, all the staff uh, in attendance, elected leaders from both localities and all agencies involved in this project, uh, welcome uh, to today. This venture is another example of teamwork between the city and Roanoke County, a true example of regionalism that will benefit all citizens. You can find other examples of a regional synergistic approach to government agencies working together here in the Roanoke Valley in drinking water with the Water Authority, tourism promotion with the Roanoke Valley Convention and Visitors Bureau, our libraries, of course our greenways, and these are just to name a few. They're all great projects that our public loves. Fire and EMS agencies, if you just heard, uh, here in the Valley have been jointly training uh, recruits for years at the Roanoke Valley Regional Fire and Rescue Training Center. Now the Roanoke Police Department and Roanoke County Police Department will do the same. The facility will have even more classrooms to house seminars and training that will attract law enforcement from outside our region. The Training Academy is a prime example of investing public money prudently. Both academies will share instructors and other resources and rely on each other's expertise to produce better trained officers and save taxpayer money while allowing both academies to operate more efficiently. It will allow recruits from both the city and the county a chance to form positive, lasting relationships at the start of their law enforcement careers. It will also allow instructors from the city and the county to work together and learn from each other as they teach in order to provide an increased level of professionalism to all the students. Officers are already working together on community concerns across city and county lines. This joint academy complex will facilitate that cooperation even more. I've heard many friends in law enforcement say criminals do not observe jurisdictional boundaries, so why should we? That is why, speaking for the city of Roanoke, we are very excited about this enduring partnership. Thank you for being here today. And now it's my honor to introduce Thomas Gates, the Roanoke County Administrator. Thank you, uh, and good morning. Uh, it's my privilege to be here this morning to help dedicate this exceptional facility. Uh, this is, in fact, the second time I've been in this facility. I was proud to be here a couple of weeks ago when we graduated our first city, county, police and sheriff's office recruit class. Uh, what struck me then, as it does now, is the collaborative spirit that so clearly exists between the city and the county. And I can tell you from experience that this level of cooperation and support between agencies uh, that exist here is truly extraordinary. What is perhaps most interesting to me, and I think a little unique, is that the cooperation between governmental agencies is truly a result of leadership and strong desire to do the absolute best for our citizens, regardless of jurisdictional boundaries. When political and administrative turf give way to cooperation, collaboration, and collegial relationships, great things happen, and this facility is an example of just that. While we all are here to dedicate this facility to doubt today and celebrate the vision that brought us to this point, I don't want to miss this opportunity to observe what I think will be the true value of this facility in the years to come. The existence of the facility now affords the opportunity for the men and women of the Roanoke County Police Department to train jointly with their brothers and sisters in the Roanoke City Police Department. Beyond giving them the training to undertake a difficult job in what is a difficult profession, it affords them the opportunity to know each other, to support each other, and to depend on each other when necessary. Having the shared experience of their training as police officers will undoubtedly pay dividends that we may not yet know. Let me, let me end uh, by thanking our partners, our colleagues in the city for making this facility and this relationship possible. We pre appreciate you and we look forward to working with you on this and many other initiatives which benefit all of our citizens. Thank you very much. Chief Hall. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is clearly a very good day uh, for the Roanoke Valley. Uh, I'm going to do three things in the next few minutes. One, I'm going to talk a little bit about the background of sort of how we got here. Uh, I want to thank some people specifically uh, and then finish up with uh, why I think we all believe this facility is so important. 
Um, the need for a facility for the Roanoke County Criminal Justice Academy you know, existed long before uh, I showed up here. Uh, and just so everybody uh, you know, understands, we serve the police department, we serve the Roanoke County Sheriff's Office, and we also serve the Western Virginia Regional Jail. Uh, so it's quite a broad variety of employees that rely on this academy for their training. And they didn't have a home. Uh, and back now, several years, uh, when I was an applicant for police chief in Roanoke County, uh, I got a little tour uh, with Dan O'Donnell, uh, our assistant county administrator, and Joe Segroy, who's our human resources director. Uh, and they brought me to this building as they're telling me about the need for an academy facility. And they explained what some other options were. Uh, and it struck me then that this location would make the most sense. You know, it's obviously a very nice facility before we started adding on. It's got this beautiful gym and some other things that probably we wouldn't be able to build on our own. So it just seemed like that would probably be the right thing to do. And I believe I said something like that. It must have been the right answer because uh, they hired me. Uh, so, uh, you know, fast forward a few weeks. The uh, day that the announcement was made that, uh, that I was going to be the, the new chief, uh, you know, we had the formalities and I had a few things I needed to do. but. Uh, I made a phone call to see if Chief Perkins was available. Uh, and he and I had dinner that night. Uh, and one of the first things we talked about, the first time we ever met, was this building. And two and a half years later, we're dedicating it. Uh, in government timing, it's pretty much light speed. Uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, work that got done. And, you know, not everybody was on the same page. It took a little work, I think, on uh, both our side and the city side to get everybody to understand what the vision is and why this is the best thing to do. No, but we got it done. You know, and I think another important point uh, you know, to mention is that the majority of the addition has been paid for with federal asset seizure funds uh, that came from a settlement that occurred long before I got here. Um, and then about a little over half a million dollars from Roanoke City and Roanoke County uh, to complete what we needed. Uh, so one, this facility is paid for. Uh, there's no financing involved. And two, most of it was paid for, not by the taxpayers of Roanoke City and Roanoke County, but by people who did some bad things. Uh, and as a result of that, had to give us some money. And I think it is a great example of how asset seizure funds can be utilized to benefit a community, not just today, but for many, many years to come. Uh, so let me move on to thanking some people. Now, when we started this process, uh, we had just assigned Commander Mike Williams to uh, the Academy, uh, and he had the task of learning how to be a training director, uh, running training classes, and building the Academy while combining those classes with Roanoke City. He has done a fantastic job of all of those things and was really the person from the police department who day to day uh, made sure that the construction project got done. So Mike, outstanding job. Um, Dan O'Donnell. Um, Dan is the assistant county administrator. Uh, got us started with his project. And uh, you know, I think I know a couple things about leading the police department. Hopefully, I don't know anything about a public construction process. Uh, fortunately, Dan does. Uh, he's got the experience. Uh, he really uh, helped us through making sure everything was done right. And he kept that responsibility. Uh, even after Mr. McNamara and the Board of Supervisors gave him a couple of extra tasks for about six months uh, while he was the interim uh, county administrator. So, Dan, we certainly appreciate your uh, help in making this happen. Uh, certainly, Chief Perkins. As I said, he and I talked about this uh, the first time uh, we met. Thanks for sharing the vision. Uh, we're here two and a half years later, uh, and this is a facility that uh, is going to benefit both of our departments in the sheriff's office and the jail for uh, a long period of time. Uh, Travis Hall from Shockey uh, was really the point person from the, the contractor uh, who had to, to get it built. Uh, they were the contractor for the original facility. And one of the things that we really wanted to see in this facility was sort of a seamless construction. Uh, and I think when you get a chance to walk through this, when you go from the city side to the addition, now the county side, you can't tell the difference. And if you didn't know that this was an addition, you'd think it was built that way. That was exactly what we wanted. And Travis, thank you and all the folks that uh, work with you in getting this done. Uh, we very much uh, appreciate the outcome. 
Uh, and certainly everybody else you know, who played a role here, the support we've gotten from the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, the Roanoke City Council, uh, all of our staffs in our respective departments, uh, the folks from our IT departments, our general services departments, our public works departments that have all played a role in making this happen, uh, thank you. Uh, because this is an important addition to public safety in the Roanoke Valley. Uh, one, it'll be more efficient. We're putting resources together. But I think more importantly to that, as Vice Mayor Trinkle said, um, our employees will start their careers working together from day one. Uh, that's going to pay dividends now as they graduate from our academies uh, and as they start their careers, but that's going to pay dividends for decades. Uh, and when uh, we were talking with the recruits that uh, Mr. McNair mentioned l last week, you know, one of the things I said to them was 20, 25 years from now, two of the people that sat in that room and graduated two weeks ago could be in my chair and in Chief Perkins' chair. Uh, and if that happens, when that happens, they will be better prepared to work together. Uh, than if they had been separate. I think that's going to be huge. Uh, and, of course, the quality of training that we'll be able to provide and the amount of training, the expanded amount of training that we'll be able to deliver in this facility together uh, is critical. Given the issues that face law enforcement in this country today, I believe that training, good quality training, is probably one of the most important things we can do and areas where we can invest to ensure that our personnel are equipped to handle whatever crisis they may be confronted with. And this is uh, a great example of uh, this facility together of the investment uh, that is needed to help us do that, uh, and it will absolutely pay uh, those dividends. So the bottom line here is, uh, this facility, this academy, and the people that work in it and train in it uh, will contribute to the safety of this community for, for decades to come. Um, so at this point, it's my privilege to introduce somebody who also had a pretty key role in this uh, uh, structure, uh, Chief Deputy Mike Warner from the Roanoke County Sheriff's Office, until a little over a month ago, was Assistant Chief Mike Warner of the Roanoke County Police Department. Uh, Sheriff Poff uh, couldn't be here, but uh, you know, there was some recruiting that took place. And uh, uh, Mike went over there, but Mike uh, helped to oversee uh, this whole process. So we appreciate your work, and uh, we'll turn the podium over to you. Thank you, Chief. Good morning. Sheriff Poff would like me to express his regrets that he could not attend today. Uh, he wanted you to know that he is proud of this facility and is looking forward to his continued work with Chief Hall and Chief Perkins. As we continue our work and support and collaborate with the Roanoke County Criminal Justice Academy. This new training facility will serve the three departments for years to come and is certainly wise to share the training programs, the space, the equipment, the resources, and the regional effort. There are so many people to thank for the forward thinking and dedication of this project. We'd like to thank the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, Roanoke City Council for approving this project and moving this regional effort forward. In addition, we'd also like to thank Dan O'Donnell, who has uh, been dedicated to this project from start to finish and has done an excellent job. And also Commander Williams. I've had the opportunity to uh, supervise Commander Williams, and he has done a day-to-day, -day, a great job day-to-day -day in his leadership of the Roanoke County uh, Academy. As we move forward with the Sheriff's Office, we're proud to have this opportunity to be a partner in the Roanoke County Criminal Justice Academy as we serve our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Deputy Warner. Just a minute, we're going to ask the uh, representatives come up and cut the uh, ribbon. But before then, I want to say thanks to a group of people. About a year ago, we started a committee that we met every other Wednesday in the afternoon to go through the process of building the addition. So it's important for me to make sure that everybody's recognized that uh, showed up for the committee and uh, what they contributed to. Obviously, Travis Hall from Howard Shockey and Sons, and I know Travis is here. And Travis, if you can uh, please relay to Tim McKee, he was the site superintendent here, uh, came down from Winchester, and he was here through the whole building construction process. A couple times I made him a little bit uh, uneasy uh, just because I was uh, picking out a few things, and he got, you know, 
looking at plans and stuff, but you know, that's part of the process, but I do appreciate what he you know, did here for us. Um, Lieutenant Booth, uh, Lieutenant Booth's not here today. He was the uh, director of the Roanoke Academy. He was at the meetings and working with him was a privilege. So Chief Perkins, if you can please relay that on. Uh, Dan O'Donnell, um, county administrator at the time, interim. So I appreciate that. Uh, Sheriff Poff attended the meetings uh, along with uh, Bobby Russell from the uh, Western Virginia Regional Jail, uh, superintendent there. Uh, Rick Gardner from IT department. I know Rick is here. And uh, if you can please uh, let Rick and your staff know, we really appreciate the technology part of it because that's one of the things that technology, very hard for me to understand, but having support of the IT department. And of course, uh, Elizabeth Lurch from uh, Acadia, our site manager. So thank you very much. Um, just a minute, we'll cut the ribbons. After the ribbon cutting, um, we have refreshments over here to our left. Uh, please help yourself. There's coffee, water, cakes, and stuff. And then we'll offer tours to the facility on both uh, the Roanoke City side and the Roanoke County side. Myself will be available. I have uh, Sergeant Campbell, who is the Assistant Director over the Law Enforcement, and Sergeant Kaiser, for the Assistant Director over the Sheriff's uh, portion. So um, please feel free to walk throughout the building. We'll be happy to show you around and go from there. Amy, if I can uh, get the representatives to come up and perform the ribbon cutting. 